In the uh, previous class, we looked at the general thrust equation and uh, we uh, looked at an aircraft engine like this where the uh, air enters with the velocity V A and leaves with the velocity V E and we applied the uh, impulse function at uh, section E and section A and calculated the thrust to be I E minus I A where I is the impulse function which is nothing but P plus rho u square times A. So, if we expand this then we uh, had the expression for thrust like this. So, P plus rho v square times A is the impulse function the subscript E denotes that this is being evaluated at the exit section and this is being evaluated at the inlet section right. And then when we uh, <coughs> make use of the fact that uh, rho times V times A is equal to the mass flow rate at that section I can uh, simplify this rearrange the terms and then simplify this to look like this. So, we have a momentum uh, term here or change in velocity here multiplied by the mass flow rate and changes in pressure. And we argued uh, based on our uh, considerations of forces on uh, pressure force on solid surfaces that the uh, net pressure force on any solid surface which is what eventually translates into thrust uh, has to be evaluated after subtracting the ambient pressure from the local pressure that is what we argued. So, keeping this in mind the uh, pressure term in this uh, equation uh, or the pressure static pressure in this equation has to be evaluated with reference to the local ambient pressure. So, local ambient pressure in this case is P A. So, we can then rearrange this or rewrite this equation like this where this P E is now uh, you can see that P E is evaluated with respect, with respect to P A. So, we have P E minus P A here and this goes to 0 because P A minus P A is uh, nothing but 0. So, this was where we uh, left our last lecture and so to uh, summarize this is our thrust equation. And let us take a closer look at the uh, thrust equation. So, you can see that there are basically two terms here the first one involves changes in velocity and the second one uh, looks at the uh, pressure forces at the exit plane right. So, and if I uh, look at this term so the first group of term is usually called the net momentum thrust. So, this is the change of momentum of the air flow rate or uh, the air that flows through the engine m dot a is the mass flow rate of air through the engine. So, this times the change in velocity of the uh, air stream as it goes through gives rise to the net momentum thrust ok. And the second term is the pressure thrust if the uh, exit pressure is above the ambient pressure then uh, the difference uh, translates into a force on the, ex the exit plane and this is nothing but the uh, pressure thrust. If the flow is correctly expanded at the exit then P E becomes equal to P A and of course, the pressure thrust becomes 0. Now, in this case the V E will also be different. So, the situation when P E is more than P A will give rise to a certain value of V E which is less when compared to the case when we P E is equal to P A. Okay, remember we are talking about a conversion nozzle here the propulsion nozzle is a conversion nozzle. So, which means that P E cannot be below P A. P E can either be equal to or greater than P A we cannot have over expanded flow in a conversion nozzle. Now, this term itself uh, with a negative sign is usually classified as the intake momentum drag this is m dot A times V A ok. So, that is uh, that is a negative term which so this actually acts as a drag term okay. So, this difference is what contributes to the net positive thrust from the engine okay. and this is something that we have to live with there is nothing that we can do about this. So, this drag has to be lived with. So, under cruise conditions V A can be quite large. So, we must make sure that V E is even larger than V A to make sure that we get enough thrust from the engine ok. Now, this uh, equation applies only to a single stream right? we have looked at single stream and we evaluated I E and I A for a single stream. So, which means it is applicable only for a turbo jet and a ramjet engine both of which have only single stream. Now, a turbo fan engine has two streams as we already saw one is the fan stream or the cold stream another one is the core engine stream or the hot stream. So, we have to modify the expression slightly for a turbo fan engine. Now, uh, let us take a look at this uh, if you want to evaluate specific thrust right specific thrust is thrust produced per unit mass flow rate of uh, air that flows through the engine. 
ok. Now, why would we want to calculate specific thrust? Okay. Specific thrust actually is very useful as a comparison metric. Let us say that you have two engines, one engine uh, takes in let us say uh, 500 kg per second of air and produces a certain amount of thrust. Another engine takes in let us say 600 kg per second of air and produces slightly more thrust. Okay. Now, how do we say which one is better? We need a figure of merit. Is this increase in thrust entirely due to the increase in mass flow rate or is the second engine really better than the first engine? Right. So, we need a we need a figure of merit that will allow us to make this kind of comparison. So, the correct figure of merit in these cases is the specific thrust. So, how much thrust does the engine produce for every kilogram per second of air that it takes in? So, you give both engines 1 kg per second of air. If the first engine produces more thrust, then obviously that is better, right? I can make the engine smaller. For a given amount of thrust, if this is superior, then the engine size will become smaller, right? So, the specific thrust allows us to make these kinds of comparisons. An engine may be producing more thrust simply because it is larger, but that is of no use to us. Remember, the most important metric is thrust per unit weight of engine. So, the larger the engine is, the heavier it is going to be. So, we want more thrust at the same time we do not want the in weight to increase too much. So, the correct metric in these cases is the specific thrust which is what is given here thrust per unit mass flow rate of air that flows through the engine. So, if a given engine produces 1 kilo Newton of thrust using a certain amount of air and another engine requires more air for producing the same thrust that means the first one is preferable because it is going to be smaller since m dot a is smaller. The cross sectional area will go down and it is going to be smaller. So, it is to be preferred. So, that is the reason why we calculate thrust uh, specific thrust for these kinds of problem. Thrust absolute thrust is important, but specific thrust allows us to compare engines depending upon their performance. Okay. Now, thrust specific fuel consumption is the amount of uh, fuel or mass flow rate of fuel through the engine divided by the thrust that the engine produces. Okay. The mass flow rate of fuel through the engine can be calculated based upon the increase in stagnation temperature that we desire. Remember we said that the turbine entry temperature has to have a certain value. So, based on that we can actually calculate the mass flow rate of fuel and the mass flow rate of fuel per unit thrust is what we are interested in. This is also very important as a performance metric. So, we will calculate both these things. The value of m dot f itself is of interest because m dot f itself you know as we said earlier will determine the size of the fuel tank that is required. Right? For example, if uh, a certain engine right, consumes a certain amount of fuel per hour let us say so many kilograms per hour, right? let us say 2 kilograms per hour. Then uh, if I look at the amount of fuel that I have to carry, let us say you know we are talking about a flight from London Heathrow to uh, Chennai, that is about 11 hour flight. So, if the engine, each engine is going to burn 2 kilo, kilograms of fuel per hour, right? that means it is uh, we are assuming the specific gravity of fuel to be approximately 1000, same as water, 1000 kilogram per meter cube. In reality, it will be slightly less, but 1000 is a good number for us to work with. So, that means we are going to consume, each engine is going to consume 2000 liters of fuel per hour. So, for a 10 hour flight, that would work out to how much? 20,000 liters of fuel. And if it is a 4 engine aircraft, that is going to work out to be something like 80 to 100,000 liters. In reality, it will be more than that. Okay? So, we are talking about tanks which must be capable of holding about. 100 to 150,000 or more liters of fuel. So, the absolute value of fuel flow rate is important because that determines the duration of the flight. Right? If you want the flight to last so many hours, you need to carry so much of fuel. Right? So, this value is important. The thrust specific fuel consumption is also important because once again it allows us to compare different engines. For example, we just know we said that if uh, one engine takes in 1 kg per second of air produces a certain amount of thrust, another engine takes in 1 kg per second of air produces let us say the same amount of thrust, then we cannot immediately conclude that both are the same. Okay, the specific thrust is same. What we are going to do next is how much fuel does the first engine consume to produce 
the same amount of thrust and how much fuel does the second engine require to produce the same amount of thrust. So, the fuel efficiency is also important. So, thrust specific fuel consumption is also a good performance metric that we will use. Okay? So, both these are important performance metrics and we will uh, calculate both these quantities. Notice that Notice that this expression has exit velocity which is something that we have to calculate, exit static pressure also. The area usually is not known, but the advantage is this quantity A e over m dot A can be expressed like this A e over rho times A times V at the exit, right? the m dot is rho times A times V. And if I write rho as P over R t then you can see that this expression A e over m dot A involves can be written I am sorry can be written entirely in terms of exit static quantities velocity, static pressure and static temperature. So, if I know V e and P e I can also evaluate this quantity. So, what we are saying is any thrust calculation must be able to calculate the starting from the intake or free stream we must be able to calculate the exit static pressure at the nozzle exit and the velocity at the nozzle exit. Once we have that other quantities can be calculated that is what the calculation procedure will involve. Okay? Now, as I said earlier the previous expression is applicable only for a single stream engine. Now, the turbofan engine as you know is a two stream engine there is a hot stream indicated with the subscript H and there is a cold stream indicated with the subscript C. So, the total thrust the net thrust is the sum of these two terms. So, the, the term here or the quantity here is the net thrust from the hot stream okay? and the term here is the net thrust from the cold stream. Right? So, this is the thrust from the cold stream, this is the thrust from the hot stream and remember the ratio m dot c over m dot h is the bypass ratio. Okay? Remember the bypass ratio is defined as the amount of air for every kg per second of air that goes through the core engine, how much air goes through the bypass stream. Okay? So, that means m dot c divided by m dot h. The total mass flow rate through the engine itself is the sum of these two m dot h plus m dot c. Right? And the specific thrust can be evaluated by dividing this thrust by m dot. And that is the net mass flow rate through the engine. So, thrust this divided by m dot gives me the specific thrust as you can see from here. And I have written everything in terms of the bypass ratio. Okay. So, the specific thrust for the turbo fan engine can be calculated using this expression and we can also calculate the, uh, the specific thrust for the uh, turbojet and ramjet engines also with the simplified expression. In fact, if you set B equal to 0 in this you recover the expression for turbojet and the thrust specific fuel consumption for the turbo fan engine again is nothing but fuel flow rate mass flow rate of fuel divided by the net thrust that the engine develops. Okay? All right. So, in this case also you can see that I need to evaluate V e at the exit and P e at the exit other things can be calculated it is not a problem. All right. So, that is what we are going to look at next how do we do thrust calculations for realistic engines using the concepts that we have described so far. We have the general thrust equation and the general thrust equation says that I need to evaluate V e and P e to calculate the thrust and I also have written down expressions for the efficiency of each component, the isentropic efficiency for each component. So, that allows me to go from one component to another and evaluate uh, one state property to another state property. So, I can just walk through the cycle like that. Okay? All right. So, let us see what we are going to do. We are going to do thrust calculation for a twin spool engine. We are going to assume two spools. There is no loss of generality. 
if you add one more spool the calculation can easily handle that also. So, there is no loss of generality in assuming a twin spool configuration it is easier. Okay. So, these are the conditions uh, that are given to us these are the operating conditions that are given to us the uh, cruise conditions are given either cruise Mach number or cruise velocity and static temperature and static pressure. So, once you are given the uh, altitude and the cruise Mach number these quantities can be evaluated. Okay, static pressure and static temperature and velocity can be evaluated. We also uh, assume that component efficiencies for the uh, different components like inlet, fan, compressor, combustor, turbine, nozzle they are all available that will be given to us and pressure loss in the combustor is also usually given. If for example, a particular value is not given then we assume the behavior of that particular component to be same as ideal behavior. If component efficiency is not given we assume it to be 100 percent. If pressure loss in the combustor is not given we assume that there is no pressure loss in the combustor. We assume ideal behavior in the absence of any other information right ok. So, the overall pressure ratio of the engine denoted by R p is also given. This may be given as 30 or 40 or whatever depending upon the uh, particular rating for the engine. Fan pressure ratio is also given ok. And bypass ratio B is also given and maximum allowable temperature which is nothing but the turbine entry temperature T04 is also given. So, these are quantities which will be given ok. Notice that the calculation procedure although we are doing it for a turbo fan engine it is actually a very general procedure because if I set the bypass ratio to 0 I recovered the turbo jet equation if I said B equal to 0 and the fan pressure ratio to be 1 that corresponds to a turbo jet engine ok. If I said uh, B equal to 0 fan pressure ratio equal to 1 in addition if I also set the compressor pressure ratio to be 1 then I recover a ramjet because ramjet has no compressor no turbine. So, if I set R p equal to 1 then I recover the ramjet. So, the calculation procedure that we are going to develop is a very very general procedure which can be used for all these engines turbojet, turbofan, ramjet and also an after burning turbojet ok it is very general. So, we will go ahead with this. So, these are uh, operating conditions for the engine that will be given to us operating conditions and other parameters like the efficiencies. In addition property data is required ok for air we will take gamma to be 1.4 and Cp to be 1.005 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin and for the combustion gases. So, we will assume that the uh, composition of the uh, working fluid is that of a combustion gas downstream of the combustor. For all components downstream of the combustor we will assume gamma to be 1.333 and Cp to be this. Notice that the Cp value here is higher than the Cp value for the cold air Cp increases with temperature. So, we kind of try to take that into account here. Okay. But still we assume the air here to be calorically perfect and we assume the combustion gases to be calorically perfect we just have two different gases in two different parts of the engine with different properties that is ok. okay. And we will also assume reasonably that the calorific value of the fuel is 45,000 kilo joule per kilogram. This is true for any typical hydrocarbon fuel ok. So, these are reasonable things. So, we will assume this throughout. Okay, and we will do the thrust calculation based on this uh, assumption and let us just quickly revisit the uh, twin spool cycle just to give you an idea. Remember the uh, free stream state is denoted by A, 0 1 is the state at the end of the intake, 0 2 is the state at the end of the fan, 0 3 is the state at the end of the compressor, 0 4 is the state at the end of the combustor, 0 5 at the end of the high pressure turbine. I am sorry uh, high pressure turbine and 0 6 is at the end of the low pressure turbine E h is at the end of the hot nozzle. In addition right in addition there is a fan stream. So, the fan stream goes from 0 1 to 0 2 and then from 0 2 it goes to the fan nozzle exit state at the fan at the exit of the fan nozzle is denoted as E c. So, the subscript h denotes hot subscript c will denote cold. Okay. So, what we will do is starting from the free stream we will walk through this 
process uh, diagram and we will calculate at each uh, state point we will calculate the stagnation temperature and stagnation pressure. So, starting from static state A we calculate P01 and T01, P02, T02, P03, T03 and so on until we come here and then at the exit here you need to calculate VEH and PEH. Similarly, for the fan nozzle we need to calculate VEC and PEC that is the objective of this exercise okay? and also mass flow rate of fuel right? those are the things that we uh, that we are going to calculate. So, let us uh, go back and continue. Okay? So, free stream state uh, let us assume that the uh, uh, velocity is given static temperature and static pressure are given that was what we wrote down in the previous slide. So, V A, P A and T A are known. So, from V A and T A I can calculate the free stream Mach number. Okay? I substitute that into this expression here I can evaluate the stagnation temperature of the free stream T 0 A. Right? Next we go to 1 remember this is the uh, exit of the inlet. Right? So, there is no energy addition, energy uh, addition or removal there is no ex, uh, work exchange in the intake. So, stagnation temperature remains constant. So, T 0 1 is equal to T 0 A. Okay? Remember what do we have to calculate for this state T 0 1 and P 0 1. So, I know T 0 1 already as I have indicated with this box. Now, we need to calculate P 0 1. We calculate P 0 1 by using the definition of the isentropic efficiency of the inlet. Right? If you remember this was how the efficiency of the isentropic efficiency of the inlet was defined. Correct? So, we assume that eta inlet is known that is given to us. Now, I know T 0 1, I know T a in this expression, I do not know T 0 1 s. Correct? I can evaluate T 0 1 s from this expression because I know all the other quantities. Right? Once I know T 0 1 s, Right. So, I can calculate T 0 1 s this way from this expression correct T 0 1 s over T a is nothing but 1 plus eta inlet times T 0 1 over T a minus 1. Once I know this notice that I can use the fact that 0 1 s and a lie along the same isentrope. Right. If you uh, recall right 0 1 s right and a lie on the same isentrope right. So, P 0 1 s over P a remember P 0 1 s itself is equal to P 0 1. So, if I evaluate P 0 1 s then I know P 0 1 that is what we are going to do I know T 0 1 s I know P a I know T a. So, I can evaluate P 0 1 s using the fact that they lie on the same isentrope right. So, that is what I am going to do here. So, P 0 1 s over P a is equal to T 0 1 s over T a to the power gamma over gamma minus 1 correct. So, now I know P 0 1 s also. So, P 0 1 is equal to P 0 1 s which itself is equal to this from this expression correct is that clear. So, now I have T 0 1 and P 0 1. Right? Are there any questions? Okay. All right. So we go to the next state, which is state two. This is at the uh, exit of the fan. Right? Now in this case, P zero two over P zero one is given to us because the fan pressure ratio itself is given to us. Right? So, P 0 2 is nothing but P 0 1 times the fan pressure ratio because that is the definition of the fan pressure ratio. I know fan pressure ratio. So, I can calculate P 0 2. So, I have put it inside a red box right. So, we know that what do we need to evaluate next T 0 2. Okay? In the case of the inlet T 0 was known we calculated P 0 using the isentropic efficiency and the isentropic relation. Now, P 0 is known. So, we are going to do the exact opposite. 
right the uh, isentropic relationship and the efficiency definition to calculate T0 ok. Let us see how we do that right. So, the isentropic relation tells me this T0 2s over T0 1 is equal to P0 2s over P0 1 to the power gamma minus 1 over gamma right. Remember So, you can see that T 0 2 s and if I raise this T 0 2 or these lie on the same isotrope right. I am going to say T 0 2 s over T 0 1. So, you can see that these states lie on the same isotrope T 0 2 s over T 0 1 P 0 2 s is also equal to P 0 2 correct. These lie on the same isobar. Right. So, I can go back to that expression to that this thing. So, you can see that because they lie on the same isentrope I can write this expression and P 0 2 s is equal to P 0 2. So, I can write this. Do you follow that logic? Is that clear? I am able to write the first equality because 0 2 s and 0 1 lie on the same isentrope and I am able to write P 0 2 s equal to P 0 2 because they lie, these two states lie on the same isobar. So, in this expression P 0 2 over P 0 1 is known that is equal to the fan pressure ratio T 0 1 is known. So, I can evaluate T 0 2 s from this right I can evaluate T 0 2 s notice that the isentropic efficiency of the fan is defined this way. So, once I know T 0 2 s from this expression the eta fan is given to us T 0 1 is known T 0 2 s is known. So, I can evaluate T 0 2 from this expression ok. So, we are now going the opposite way given the stagnation pressure we use the isentropic relationship to calculate the other quantity then we use the isentropic efficiency expression to calculate the stagnation temperature right. So, that stagnation temperature T 0 2 is equal to T 0 1 and we make use of the T 0 2 s value to evaluate it ok. So, now I have P 0 2 and T 0 2 ok. So, if this is given then we go this way to calculate that as we did in the previous case. If this is given then we go through this way to calculate this ok. Next stage HP compressor outlet remember the overall pressure ratio of the engine is given. So, the overall pressure ratio is nothing but P 0 3 over P 0 1 ok. So, so P 0 3 itself will then be equal to P 0 3 over P 0 2 times P 0 2 over P 0 1 times P 0 1 right. So, I get P 0 3 to be equal to this. Okay. So, this is uh, straightforward. So, now I have the stagnation pressure I need to calculate the stagnation temperature. So, I do this the same way. So, I use this fact and I use the isentropic relationship T 0 3 s is equal to T 0 2 times P 0 3 s divided by P 0 2 raised to the power gamma minus 1 over gamma right and P 0 3 s itself is equal to P 0 3. Right. So, I have substituted for that here P 0 3 over P 0 2 from here is equal to R P over fan pressure ratio F P R right. So, P 0 3 s is equal to P 0 3 and P 0 3 over P 0 2 from this expression is equal to R P over fan pressure ratio that is what I have done here. So, I have T 0 3 s compressor efficiency is written like this I know T 0 3 s I know T 0 2. So, T 0 3 can be evaluated because eta compressor is also known to us right. So, so you can see that T 0 3 is equal to T 0 2 plus 1 over efficiency of compressor times this quantity. So, now I have indicated this also in the red box. So, that now we are done with state 3.
we know P03 and T03. Okay. Because the next component is the combustor. Now, again we need P04 and T04. T04 is given that is the turbine entry temperature that is given to us. So, there is nothing that we need to do for this. P04 is calculated if the pressure loss in the combustor is given normally that is given as a percentage. We may say there is a 10 percent loss of uh, stagnation pressure in the combustor. So, then I can convert it into an expression like this right. So, this is the loss of stagnation pressure right. So, this ratio will be equal to 0 0.1. So, the stagnation pressure at the exit of the combustor is 0 0.9 times the stagnation pressure at the entry to the combustor. So, now I know T04 and P04. So, combustor is relatively straightforward. In fact, later on uh, knowing the change in stagnation temperature across the combustor, I know T04, I know T03, I can calculate the mass flow rate of fuel based on this change in stagnation temperature and that also we will do later on. The next component is the high pressure turbine outlet right that is state 5. So, we need T05 and P05. Now, uh, things get a little bit uh, different. Remember the HP turbine produces just enough work to run the HP compressor right as indicated here the HP turbine produces just enough work to run the HP compressor. So, if you do an energy balance for the turbine right. So, the energy balance for the turbine uh, reads like this m dot h plus m dot f that is the net amount of mass that is going through the high pressure turbine correct. The change in stagnation temperature across the high pressure turbine is T04 minus T05. Okay. Normally, there could be a loss of uh, uh, power due to friction you know we take the high pressure turbine we are connecting it to the compressor. So, this may produce 1 kilowatt of power, but we may lose some amount of this in the transmission friction and so on. So, this may get only 0 0.9, but I know that this wants so much power. So, if you take the friction into account how much power should the turbine produce that is what this expression says right. So, the power required by the uh, HP compressor is given by this expression m dot h times C p times this. To produce this much power I need to produce this much work from the turbine ok. Strictly speaking uh, the m dot f must be accounted for here, but in, in general the m dot f is usually much much smaller than m dot h. So, we can safely whenever we are adding these two types of terms we can safely ignore this ok. So, we can safely ignore this m h dot plus m f dot is almost the same as m h dot. So, we can neglect this cancel the m h dot on both sides and we get the T 0 5 using this expression ok. What is that? This component is unlike the compressor that we looked at ok. The in the compressor the pressure ratios were given the fan pressure ratio was given which means that I can calculate the exit stagnation state using the given fan pressure ratio. For the turbine which is going to run the compressor I have to calculate the exit stagnation state by using the fact that it needs to produce so much work. Okay. The pressure ratio across the turbine is not given. However, I know that it needs to produce so much work to run the compressor. The pressure ratio across the compressor is given right. So, I use that to calculate the stagnation state at the exit of the compressor. For the turbine I use the fact that the work produced is known to calculate the exit state of the turbine that is what I have done here. So, as you can see from here notice that again the uh, gas that goes through the turbine. Uh, has different properties when compared to the air that goes through the compressor. So, this is C p g and this is C p ok. So, now I know T 0 5 how do I calculate P 0 5 by using the same trick as before right. I know T 0 I calculate P 0 by using the isentropic relationship and then the definition of the efficiency or efficiency and then isentropic relationship right. 
So, I use the uh, uh, efficiency definition and then the isentropic relationship to calculate the value for P05. Okay. So, what I do is with the T05, this is the efficiency expression for the turbine, right. So, in this expression, I know eta turbine, I know T04, I know T05. So, I can calculate T05S. Once I know T05S, I can calculate P05S correct using the isentropic relationship. Once I know P05S that is equal to P05 because they are on the same isobar that is what we are doing here all right. So, the calculations can be very involved. So, you have to be very methodical in doing these calculations. We will uh, in the next class we will try to work with numbers to demonstrate this uh, calculation procedure it is going to be quite involved. All right. Now, same procedure with the LP turbine outlet with a slight difference. Now, the LP turbine produces just enough work to run the LP compressor. Right. Remember, this is a two spool engine. So, LP compressor means fan plus whatever stages we have in the LP compressor. But notice now that the mass flow rate through the compressor is not m dot h, but it is m dot c plus m dot h. right that is the first stage. So, the entire mass flow rate goes through the fan right. So, the amount of work required to run the LP compressor or the fan is going to be the total mass flow rate times Cp times change in stagnation temperature ok. By LP compressor what we mean here is the fan. Once again the uh, amount of air that goes through the LP turbine however, is only m dot h plus m dot f ok. With the m dot f being small I can neglect this in comparison to this and I can simplify this expression ok. But this is a very important difference from the previous uh, case. The HP turbine runs the HP compressor, but the HP compressor is part of the core engine which means only m dot h kg per second of air goes through the HP turbine or the HP compressor. Right. The LP compressor or the fan is located outside the core engines which means that total mass flow rate is going to go through that. So, I can evaluate T06 from this after making use of the fact that m dot f is much smaller than m dot h. So, I have been able to write this in terms of the bypass ratio. So, T06 the stagnation temperature at the exit of the LP turbine can be calculated. Once I know this, I can use the definition of the isentropic efficiency of the turbine and the isentropic relation itself to calculate the stagnation pressure at the exit of the LP turbine ok. So, let us see how that is done. So, that is what we have done here. Notice that uh, we use the definition of the isentropic efficiency of the turbine to calculate this quantity and then we use the isentropic relation to calculate P06S. Once we have P06S then I can calculate P06 because they are both equal to each other that is what I have done to calculate this and we have put both these inside the red box. So, now we are done with state 6 also. So, what follows from here is the nozzle. And remember the nozzle analysis for the nozzle has to be done carefully because there are two possible states one the flow is choked another one the flow is not choked ok. So, that is what we need to take into account when we do the calculation for the nozzle ok. Let us see how this is done are there any questions so far. So, let us see how the calculation for the nozzle is done. So, we will first do the calculation for the hot nozzle. Okay. So, the outlet of the hot nozzle the state at the outlet of the hot nozzle is denoted by E h E for exit and H for hot ok. And remember we need only the static pressure static temperature and the velocity and the exit of the nozzle not the stagnation quantities ok. If you recall we developed an expression for the critical pressure of a nozzle which has irreversibilities we derived this expression in one of the earlier classes right. So, if the nozzle has irreversibilities then the critical pressure is related to the inlet stagnation pressure using this expression 
okay in fact if you said eta nozzle equal to 1 okay, you will recognize the term inside the uh, the bracket to be nothing but 2 over gamma g plus 1 which is what we have in an isentropic case right so in the case when there are irreversibilities in the nozzle this is what the critical pressure is so we evaluate the critical pressure remember we know p06 right we know p06 i know eta nozzle and i know other quantities so once i have p06 i can evaluate critical the critical pressure using this relationship so that is what i would do next once i evaluate p06 i evaluate the critical pressure then i compare the critical pressure with the ambient pressure remember we are given the ambient pressure and the ambient temperature right so i know the ambient pressure so i compare the critical pressure with the ambient pressure if the critical pressure is for the given value of p06 if the critical pressure is greater than the ambient pressure then i know for sure that the nozzle is choked and the exit pressure peh is nothing but the critical pressure itself okay so one as soon as i have p06 i do this evaluation and then i make this determination if p critical is more than p ambient then the nozzle is choked and the exit static pressure is the critical pressure otherwise the nozzle is not choked and the exit static pressure is equal to the ambient pressure okay so this allows me to evaluate the exit static pressure immediately what i need now is the exit velocity once i have the exit velocity remember there is no energy addition or removal in the nozzle which means the stagnation temperature at the exit nozzle exit is the same as the at the inlet there is no change in stagnation temperature so if i have v then i can evaluate the static temperature or if i have the static temperature i can evaluate the velocity at the exit okay so i need only two quantities at the exit right so oh, is this procedure clear okay so how do we calculate how do we calculate uh, the static temperature we derived this expression in our earlier lecture that if the uh, once the, uh, once the exit pressure is known i can write the uh, exit static pressure is known i can write the exit static temperature using this relationship right this was the what we derived in our earlier discussion involving the nozzle right let us uh, quickly go back and take a look at that so if you remember um, this was what we did earlier right and in fact if you uh, do this okay so if you look at the nozzle itself you can see that the uh, operating conditions for the nozzle so 4 here is the inlet to the nozzle and e is the exit of the nozzle and if you remember this is ve square over 2 cpg and this is a static state es which is at the same pressure as which is at the same pressure as uh, pe right and uh, this is ve square over 2 cpg right and then we uh, define the isentropic efficiency of the nozzle this way right t04 minus te divided by t04 minus tes tes has to be evaluated to uh, complete this expression so if you remember if the nozzle is not choked then we said pes equal to pe equal to pa correct and then so pes over p04 both these uh, lie on the same isentrope so i can use this relationship right from which i calculated my tes once i know tes i can calculate te from the definition of the nozzle or once i know tes i can calculate ve square right and then i can calculate ve from the definition of the nozzle efficiency right so once i know uh, the exit pressure once i know the exit pressure i know pes and once i know pes i know p04 i can calculate the exit velocity in this case when the nozzle is not choked similarly when the nozzle is choked right then 
this is the uh, process that we went through and remember the ve is now equal to the speed of sound and we went through this right so tes can be evaluated and once again pes is also no pes is equal to pe same as before once i know the exit pressure i can calculate the other quantities okay for example if i know tes right or uh, i'm sorry if i know the exit pressure then i know pes i know p04 i know t04 i can calculate tes correct and then once i know tes i can calculate ves square over 2 cpg once i know ves square over 2 cpg i can calculate ve square over 2 cpg okay so this is the expression that we are using now to calculate because i know the exit pressure in both cases right pe is equal to pes right once i know pe i know pes then i can use this relationship to calculate tes once i know tes i know ves square over 2 cpg and then i know ve square over 2 cpg so once i know the exit pressure exit static pressure i can calculate the exit static temperature and veh can be evaluated that's not a problem right notice that here we are evaluating the exit static temperature by using the fact that pehs is equal to peh both are on the same isobar that is what i am using here and once i have this i substitute the value for tehs here to evaluate teh okay so what i am doing here is once i know the exit static pressure i know pehs once i know pehs i can evaluate tehs right as soon as i know tehs i can evaluate teh from this expression that is what i have written here is it clear go ahead pH because the um, uh, the THS is required here the THS is required here notice that the numerator here is nothing but VH square over 2 CPG right the denominator is VHS square over 2 CPG so I need this and then I can get this once I get this I can get this and notice that this term AEH over M dot H can also be calculated this way Okay, any questions? All right. So this is how we do uh, the calculation for the hot nozzle. Now, for the cold nozzle, we do the same thing. Once I have P02, I can evaluate the critical pressure. I evaluate the critical pressure, compare that with the ambient pressure, and when if the critical pressure is more than the ambient pressure, then the nozzle is choked and I uh, state that the exit static pressure is equal to the critical pressure ok uh, otherwise the nozzle is not choked and the exit static pressure is equal to the ambient pressure so same as before in, the, in fact the procedure is uh, in the hot and the cold nozzle are the same as before ok so we do the same thing here so we use the uh, definition of the nozzle efficiency right so once I have the exit static pressure I know once I know PEC I know PECS once I know PECS I can evaluate TECS once I know TECS I can evaluate TEC using this expression once I know TEC I can calculate VEC using this and again this ratio can be calculated like this ok any questions? So what we will do in the next class is continue this and uh, uh, fi finalize the procedure then go through a numerical example and calculate some of the values. Okay?